Hello mortals, I am the booktube god, it's the number one drag queen booktuber on YouTube. <laughs> this is where I review the Wheel of Time Amazon series and we are on episode six. Warning, if you haven't seen the episode yet, there will be spoilers. And before we go on, please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And let me know in the comments what you think of this episode. I liked this episode more than last episode, mainly because I got what I wanted to see, more of the Aes Sedai and their hierarchy in action. But I have to wonder if I wouldn't actually be enjoying this series more if I hadn't read the books. Because there were a lot of times I was saying to myself, what the f is going on? I was looking forward to seeing Sue Ann Sanchi, the Amarillin seat, be really hostile to Moraine. And then we find out that they are actually working together behind the scenes. What I did not expect was a revelation that they were lesbian lovers. Trust me, that was not in the book. Now, don't get me wrong, I have no problem with that, but I did have to ask myself, why? What purpose did this have to do with the plot? Now, there wasn't really much sexy time in the Wheel of Time books, so I'm not really sure why they felt the need to manufacture it here. In episode one, we got a love scene between Rand and Egwene, and hints that Moraine and Lan are intimate. And we got the Aes Sedai thruple with her two warders, though I think that was hinted at in the books. Now, later in the books, we do get a polyamorous relationship, but I believe Jordan actually got a lot of flack for that. Anyway, the books weren't really known for sex scene, so I just think it was odd that they decided to lean into it here. Now, I get the need to change the story to fit the medium of a film series, especially since the storyline of The Wheel of Time is so sprawling. But it has been done with success before. We saw it in Game of Thrones. And you've heard me say this, but it was apparent that the writers and producers were really big fans of Game of Thrones. But here, I kind of question if the writers and producers were really fans of The Wheel of Time, because it seems the way they are rewriting the storyline really departs from the original in significant ways. And here I'm talking about the core themes or world building. And I hate to keep harping about this, but it, it seems to me the writers just didn't know how to handle one of the main world building elements of the Wheel of Time. The source of power in the Wheel of Time was divided between male and female. In the books is called Sidin and Sidar. And the male half of power, Sidan, is corrupted by the Dark One. So any male channeler who uses the power becomes corrupted and goes insane. Now, I get it. Dividing males and females seems dated to some people. I think they could have fixed it by calling the two halves of the source of power magnetic and dynamic rather than male and female, and that reincarnated spirits of people are either magnetic or dynamic. It just so happens that 99% of magnetic souls are reincarnated in female bodies and 99% of dynamic souls are reincarnated in male bodies. And hey, that would mean we could get some trans people channeling, a few men who could channel without going mad, and a few women who can channel and do go mad because they're souls don't match the gender of the bodies are in, if that makes sense. It would have been a huge change, but at least it would be keeping with the spirit of the books and would have made more sense that the Dragon Reborn could have been male or female. Now, in the books, we find out about the history of Lou's 
Theron, who was the dragon. And he is the one that trapped the Dark One and the Forsaken. And the Forsaken are the big, bad, powerful followers of the Dark Ones. And he trapped them behind seals. But in doing so, the Dark One was able to corrupt the male half of the Source of Power. And before then, the Source of Power was uncorrupted and pure, and they were both male and female Aes Sedai. But when all the male channelers went insane, they began using their powers to destroy everything around them. Thus, we get what is called the breaking of the world. Now, the prophecy is that Luz Theron will be reborn, the dragon reborn, and fight the last battle with the Dark One, who is basically Satan or the devil. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there was a dragon being reborn over and over again. Uh, but I don't trust my own memory, so let me know in the comments. The series doesn't appear to really get into the necessity of having two halves of power, which for me makes the world building confusing. I kind of get why they don't want to divide the power between male and female. But again, I think they could have divided it in some other way because we need a reason why half the channelers go insane. As much as I enjoyed seeing Tar Valen in the Aes Sedai politics, this departs from the books insofar that Moraine takes the two rivers' heroes to the Eye of the World before they get to Tar Valon. Once at Tar Valon, Egwene and Nynaeve pretty much need to become Aes Sedai novices. But since we're now at Tar Valon before the Eye of the World, there has to be some justification or reason for Moraine to take everyone, including Egwene and Nynaeve, out and to the eye of the world. Thus, my guess is that the writers decided that Moraine had to think that Egwene and Nynaeve could be possible dragons or dragon reborns. So that kind of makes sense. But then the reason to get to the eye of the world was changed. I believe there were dreams or something that the seals were breaking that would release the Dark One and the Forsaken, which lose Sarah and the first dragon imprisoned. But in the series, the reason is that the Dark One is actually at the eye of the world and weak. So Moraine is throwing all the potential dragons at him in hopes that he'll be defeated. What the f***? Also, what is up with Matt being such a dick? He was one of my favorite characters in the books, and now he's this moody, somber coward who stays behind when Moraine opens up the way gate. My fear is that he's being totally rewritten and giving this weird character arc where he practically becomes a dark friend before maybe some huge redemption substory. Why? I don't know. I'd love to have been a fly on the wall during the storyboard meetings where the writers decided to butcher, <coughs> I mean, revise the storyline. One thing that could have easily been done when Moraine was asking Loyal to help them was introduce that Ogiers can navigate between the worlds. Obviously, Moraine hit it at that with her meeting with Loyal, but Nothing was explicitly said. And that's another thing that really annoys me with this series. They seem to have a real need to make sure there are mysteries and red herrings that weren't in the books. To me, it isn't adding anything. Now, if Loyal is not <laughs> instrumental in navigating through the Waygates next week, something is really off because then there would be no need for him at all. Finally, when Moraine traveled through that magical device to secretly meet with Suan Sanchi, it wasn't clear if she was teleporting or if she was entering the dream realm, which is an important part of the story, and I was wondering if they were even going to introduce it, but it wasn't clear. Also, if Moraine and Suan Sanchi had Tarandrials, which are the magic items, and I'm sure I'm butchering how to pronounce it. But if they had these magic items that let them meet in the dream realm, then they could meet anytime. So why was there this dramatic farewell? 
Again, I'm thinking I probably would have enjoyed this series more if I did not read the books because I think I have too many expectations. But then again, I know people who are fans of the books are also fans of this series. And a friend of mine actually who was asking me if I've seen this episode when I said I did sent me a meme. I have to say that I'm not a huge fan so far, but I want to hear from you. If you've read the books, what do you think of the series? If you haven't read the books, are you enjoying it? Until we meet again, may all the books you read and their film adaptations be blessed. <laughs> <laughs>